So today we get to break down how people can drive their supercars for essentially free. Like how I, I mean, how I do it and how I would do it if I were you. So we're going to break down the numbers so you guys can, uh, you know, kind of understand what you have to do. Uh, we're going to teach something. Yes. We're going to teach something. Yes. It is, time. It's not what everybody is thinking either. You know, everyone wants to be like, oh, my God, you know, I can do this for absolutely free. You either going to need some credit or cash or, or but you're going to need something. And we're going to talk about what you fucking need because I'm tired of all these guys on YouTube talking about this shit. Uh, you can drive this car for free. You can kind of, but it's not the free that they think that, that it is. You got to exchange something for it. No, I, mean, I, I stopped dating chicks in the city like that. I'm like, yo, you got street parking? No, I'm good. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, you, I'm good. No, nah, I mean, this chick, she got mad. She was like, I, I was like, look, I was like, I'm not trying to be bougie or anything like that. I was like, but. I was like, I'm not trying to leave my cars, you know, in the city overnight, unless it's, you know, like someplace I know, blah, blah, blah. She's like, what you got, like a little Acura or something? I was like, ah, uh, I, like, I was like, something like that. I was like, something like that. She's like, well, the guy, you know, across the street from me, he got a Mercedes and he parks there, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I was like, I don't, I don't think so. You know, I, I went and saw her. I was like, all right, cool. You know what? I'll, I'll still hang out with you. So I'll go pick you up. I was like, that way I can explain it without having to actually right. explain it. I was like, because I don't want to come off and be like, bitch, I drive a Lamborghini. Like, <laughs> you know, so I pulled up in a Mac. I had a 600 at the time. I had a black one. <laughs> I pulled up in a Mac. Yeah, I pulled up, yeah, I pulled up in a 600. And so, you know, I, you know, I pull up, you know, and I'm looking like, and, and she right, the neighbor had a Mercedes, but it was an old ass Mercedes S500. Uh, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Shit, so it was like the early 2000s, you know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the topic at hand. So we're going to talk about how you guys can drive supercars like I drive without having to actually pay for them, quote unquote. And no, we're not talking about, you know, car hacking and all that shit, because car hacking is what a lot of people do, at least when it comes to supercars. I mean, you could do it with any car, really, but supercars more often than not, you know, where you have somebody else take that, that hit with the depreciation. You buy the right cars in the right spec at the right time, and you typically don't lose any money. You can move in and out of it, you know, within six months, a year, whatever. But for the sake of argument, we're not gonna talk about that because even though you can generally sell the car at the price you bought it for, even more in some cases, like, you know, the AMG Black, you know, Black Series, AMG GT Black Series, the Hurricane Stowe, the, you know, Perfomonte right now, whatever, that's not for the average person, okay? so. Again, you guys are gonna need some type of credit or cash or, or capital, whatever, to make this work. So let's look at, I don't know, a 570S. You know, let's say you're getting a 570S for $185,000 out the door, 185,000. Now, most people don't know that when it comes to exotic financing, you're not gonna finance that much money for 60, you know, 60 months, 60 months, 72 months. Generally, you're gonna be financing for, you know, for 84 months or longer at that that price point. It's not gonna be, all right, you know, I'm financing $185,000 in 60 months. So if you do finance something like that, just know it's gonna be a long ass time. And in some cases, uh, 144 months. So we'll say 84, 84 months to 144 months, 72 at the, at the lowest. So let's say you finance $185,000 at 6% interest and you're doing it for 144 months, all right? So your payment's gonna be, don't quote me on this freaking math, but it's, it's around $1,800. I think it, it's a little bit over $1,800 a month. And if you do 144 months, 6%, it ends up being like $250,000, $260,000 that you would pay if you, you kept it over the course of that time. So it's like $80,000 in interest. It's a lot. Well, 70, 80,000. Again, don't quote me on the exact numbers, but I'm pretty sure it's close. My math is pretty decent. You know, I have a like whole math degree, but outside of that. All right, so how do we actually drive these things without having to pay for them? You use your damn assets, people, assets, whether it be real estate, businesses, whatever. So in the case, in, in my case, let's use real estate. And we're gonna break down this example as far as numbers go, okay? So 
My rental properties, I have them out in Reading. I'm buying them anywhere from 45,000 to 75,000, all right? And that's generally all in, okay? So that's with renovations, the whole nine. So we'll use two of my properties that I purchased recently as an example. I bought these for 47.5 a piece. 47.5, I haven't put any, any money into renovations. They're both rented out currently right now at $950 a month, all right? So that is free and clear. I don't have any mortgages on them. It's 47.5. So now my property management company gets 10%. So, you know, we got to drop that down. We'll just say I'm getting 850 a month or whatever between, you know, for each one. Now your payment is 1805. You would need to get, you know, what? Another one and a half to make that work roughly. Well, not even one and a half. Like you could just get half. You can get half of one and make that work. But let's just say you, you would need to get another property. You can get a cheaper one at around 30 some thousand. So the cheapest property that I did look at was 32.5 and it was being rented for $650 a month. Now for me, that doesn't make any sense. But for someone like you, that makes absolutely perfect sense. Where you can buy a property at $32,000, it's already rented out. You don't have to do anything to it. These people are trying to stay. So you're collecting money day one. A mortgage on a $30,000 property, if you do, you know, even, listen, you can do a 15 year mortgage on a $30,000 property if you want it. But let's just say you do a 30 year mortgage on a uh, $30,000 property. Your mortgage payment is almost non-existent. You're not even gonna care. Literally not gonna care. Like no bullshit, not gonna care. You know, so your payment is only a couple hundred dollars a month, if even that. So the money that you're making off the rent doesn't necessarily matter in the grand scheme of things because you're going to be cash flow positive day one if that person is, is in the uh, in the rental property from from the moment that you purchase it so let's just say you have the two that i bought at 47.5 and then you have another one that you bought for 32.5 and you're making 600 dollars. well congratulations your rental properties pay for that car so case in point the one car i, I have financed right now is my track car i financed that at three point three point seven three point six percent through Chrysler, uh, Chrysler Financial, which I didn't know I was gonna be able to get financed through Chrysler Financial, to be honest with you. But my car payment is roughly $800, give or take. It's like 800, something like that. My one rental property, the first one that I bought, actually, I actually paid a little bit more for because it was renovated and everything else, but it pays me like $962 a month after all of my, uh, after all my fees, my management company, everything else. $962, my, my track hawk payment is covered. I don't ever have to worry about it. So that one rental property that I have on, on Hawk Street in Reading pays everything. It pays the insurance and it pays for my car. It pays for the, the track hawk. So I don't have to even think about it. So every month when that, that bill comes, you know, for the track hawk, which is actually going to go bye-bye for the new car that's coming uh, for my RSQ8 once it gets here in June, July, I think that's when, it, when they'll have it delivered. But yeah, I don't, I don't have to worry about it. That rental property covers everything. It covers the insurance. It covers, you know, the, uh, the car payment. It doesn't cover damn gas in that thing because... <laughs> We all know that shit getting terrible fucking gas mileage. But, you know, just in that case, you know, I'm done. So my um, my 675, my 675 Spider, they wanted 375 at, at McLaren, right? They wanted $375,000. I got it for far less than that, far less than that, you know? So let's put this in perspective with, um, uh, you know, so let, let's put this in perspective with the numbers that we had before. So you're looking at, a car that's roughly double, so 185, you know, thousand dollars. Let's just say, you know, just add another 185 to it, and you get roughly the price that I was going to pay for the 765. I didn't pay that price. I got a much better deal because I'm a good customer at McLaren Philadelphia. But whatever. So let's say you're paying 360 thousand dollars. So 360 thousand dollars, you finance it, which you're going to have to have amazing fucking credit, and you're going to have to have a very strong income to do. But whatever, 360 thousand dollars. So my rental properties could cover that no problem. Now, mind you, I have, what, uh, we have 12, 13 right now that we bought in the last, like, six months? Correct me if I'm wrong, John? Something like that? Yeah. Something like, so just those, just the ones I bought in the last, like, six months would cover all of that and then some. Like, I could essentially have three 675 Spiders and my rental properties would cover all of that. Now, let's say you're like, bro, I don't have that kind of money. You know, I'm, I'm, I just, I can't do it. You know, I ain't got the credit or whatever, whatever the fuck. Let's just say that you ain't got it. All right. So here's how you can do something else to make your car payment. Now, 
if you guys don't know, I have an OnlyFans management agency. So, you know, we manage the girls' accounts, you know, we have managers for them. The girls don't do anything besides take pictures and then upload them to Google Drive and the managers do all the rest of the work. So just to give y'all a heads up, if y'all think y'all talking to them girls, you're really not, you're talking to a manager. But whatever, I digress. So yeah, you over there beating that thing to death and you ain't even talking to the girl you think you're talking to. But at any rate, I take 25%, which is actually really, really low. I should be bumping that up, but I'm not going to because, you know, that's just a contract they're locked into. So one of the girls in question, she makes anywhere between 10 to $15,000 a month. So we'll say on a low end, I make $2,500 from her. All right, so I don't have to do anything at all, at all. And I get $2,500 because I own the company. It's automated. I don't have to do anything. So $2,500, people, that would cover your, your, uh, your 570 payment. If you finance $185,000, your car payment would be $1,800. Roughly, what, $1,805, $1,810, something like that? You wouldn't have to worry about your payment because guess what? Someone else is essentially paying it for you. You get to drive that car for free. And then when you get ready to sell it, since you're buying it at a fair, I mean, right now in this market, eh, probably not. If you bought it at like 170, you'd probably break even when you sold it. But I digress. So, I mean, you're good. That's what you guys have to do. When people are saying that they're driving these cars for free, they're either talking about hacking or they're talking about their assets paying for it. They had to do something in the, in the beginning to pay for that car, all right? Whether that be buy rental properties or you know buy some type of appreciating asset, whatever it is, they had to do something to get to that point or use their, their credit to do so. Maybe they took a, um, a home equity line of, of credit. Maybe they took out a HELOC, you know, which you can do a, like a cash out refi. So, Let's say I want to get a blanket mortgage on the properties that I bought, you know, recently. I can do that. You know, I could take 70% of, of my portfolio value. I could probably take more than that, but we'll just say 70%. And we'll say 70% on a million dollars, which the portfolio is worth more than that. But we'll just to make it easy, we'll just give a nice, you know, even number, you know, a million dollars. So a million dollars, you take 70%, that's $700,000 that I will be getting back in the cash out refi tax free. So I didn't have to pay taxes on that money whatsoever. And I can go buy that, that car cash. And I'm still collecting money on the rental income on that portfolio, whether that be commercial or residential, it doesn't necessarily matter. I'm winning all the way around. That's what you guys have to understand when these guys are talking about, you see dudes on YouTube talking about, oh, you know, I, I drive this car for free. Chances are they're talking about they're hacking that car. You know, they're gonna drive it for a few months, make their car payment, and then they're gonna sell it at the same price or maybe even make a little bit of money on it. What they're not talking about is, yo, I got assets to make this happen. A lot of these YouTubers, bro, they're all cap. You know, they're talking about like the leases and everything else and buy, well, they're not necessarily talking about them, but they're leasing these cars and they're, you know, YouTube is paying them very well, not to say that they're not making any money. Let's say they're making 20, 30 grand a month, which is a whole lot of money. They're using that, that YouTube income to pay for these cars. So essentially they're driving them for free. But if YouTube is your primary source of income, it's your job, you have to create content to make that money. You're not necessarily driving it for free. Not even close. You actually have to work. That's earned income. You never, ever, ever, ever want your want to have to use your earned income for some type of major luxury like that. Now for like an everyday car, sure, your earned income is going to be fine for that. But if you're buying a car that's a hundred and something thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars. Like you want to have assets that can generate your car payment, so that way you're not coming out of pocket. So you're driving that car for free, even though you're making a payment every month. It is essentially free because it's not costing you anything personally. Your assets are paying for that. So if you're making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month in rental income, you don't have to to lift a finger to make that car payment. So when you guys see me driving my cars, like even let's say. My, my 765, my 765, I might actually finance some of it. I don't know yet. It just depends on how I feel. I hate car payments, by the way. That's why I just buy my cars cash, which is stupid because that the, I could use 300 and something thousand dollars and I can go get more rental properties or, or buy, you know, a business or whatever. And I, it, it would generate more, you know, more revenue than that car is ever going to generate. But like I said, I hate car payments, which is fucking stupid, but we'll, we'll get into that one day. So. I might actually finance some of my, my 765. Now the 765 is going to cost a little bit over $700,000. You know, I probably have one of the highest spec um, 765 spiders that's ever going to be produced. So I might finance like 300 something thousand dollars worth, but it's not going to matter because I have enough assets to cover that and then some. 
the whole goal is to not go broke buying these luxuries guys like you don't ever want to go broke buying the luxuries and a lot of people do how many times do you see people waiting in line you guys might have even done it you know christmas rolled around you wanted to get your your pretty young thing something nice right you wanted to buy something hot you know you was like yo i'm gonna go to louis v i'm gonna get my girl a bag i'm gonna go to gucci get my girl a bag and then you're sitting there spending money that you really don't have to spend but you're doing it when you when you do things like that you're not you're not exchanging money for that 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 product what you're doing is exchanging your time all right so let's say you make twenty dollars an hour that bag costs two grand that is a hundred hours that you have to spend working to make the money for that bag all right so let's let's put that in perspective people that's a hundred hours a hundred funky ass hours that you have to work in order to, to reproduce that two thousand dollars that you spent buying that bag for old girl that's probably gonna leave you when she get a dude that's really balling you don't want to fake the funk you really like everybody's talking about fake it till you make it it's, that's not the way to do it bro i didn't i didn't come out with crazy shit until i could actually afford to come out with crazy shit so people that know me out here in philly i wasn't driving crazy cars like i was making money but I needed to make sure that it was reproducible and that my, the assets that I was building or, or purchasing and then building up could generate the income necessary to, to hold on to those things. All right, so don't go out there and get yourselves caught the fuck up. I know you guys know some people with some Hellcats that got the motherfuckers at 15% interest, 20% interest. These motherfuckers paying $1,100, $1,200 a month for a fucking Hellcat. A Hellcat. I just showed y'all how you could drive a, a McLaren, a 570S, for $1,800. Why would you spend $1,200 for a Hellcat when you can go buy a true exotic for a little bit more? You could actually get an R8 for the same price, the same payment a month that you can get a Hellcat for, and it's arguably a nicer car. You know, y'all need to pay attention to that stuff. Like, you guys are looking at a lot of YouTubers and, and this cap, and like, obviously I'm on YouTube or whatever, but YouTube isn't my primary source of income. I don't make shit off YouTube relative to what I'm spending to make videos and everything else. You know, my money comes from my businesses and my assets. Remember that, you know, make sure that you guys never, ever go broke. Have enough assets to cover, you know, buying supercars, watches, whatever the hell you want. Like, you know, talking to this guy just a little bit ago, you're young. Everyone's like, oh, you get a Rolex, yep. right? Everyone buys a Rolex, yep. you know? It's a Submariner. Yep. You buy a Submariner. Like right now, actually, I want to buy a Hulk. Like I, I've been, but the problem is they keep going up in price. I'm like, I don't want to spend, I should have bought one a year ago. Yeah when they were, you know, relatively cheap. Wow. You know, by but now they've doubled if not tripled in price. Like it's hard to find one in good condition for the price that you want to pay. But, you know, it, being young, I'm like, "Oh, yeah, when I get older, I'm going to buy a Rolex." And then as I, you know, I got older and made more money, I was like, "Wait a second. I was like, there's other watches besides these guys?" I was like, "Oh, there's Patek." The um, just that, like, yeah, whatever you think is what the you know, there's yeah. Paddock and there's AP and you oh, know no there's Richard. Richard. I mean, yeah. FP Jorn. Once I found out about yeah. FP Jorn, yeah. my my mind was blown. I'm like, wow. I was like, I'm, I was like, I feel like such a peasant in the watch industry because mm -hmm. there is just the level of craftsmanship that FP Jorn has is is unmatched. Like I don't care what anybody else says, I I wholeheartedly believe that is one of the the creme de la cremes at that point. I mean, it's. I, I FP Jorns, you guys saw my video. That watch was over four hundred thousand dollars, four hundred thousand dollars. And guess what? Assets are gonna pay for all that. I don't have to worry about it. Like I don't even have to blink and be like, oh my god, how am I gonna pay for this four hundred thousand dollar watch? Assets pay for it. Think about that. You know, so something for y'all to think about because driving cars for free, that that's love. Like I don't ever have to worry about my car payments because my assets pay for all that shit. Whether you guys be in crypto, Forex, it doesn't necessarily matter. If you guys have a good trading pattern with crypto, guess what? You're you're gonna be using assets to pay for all your shit. Now, granted, it's you know it's a little bit more active. You're not really making that money in your sleep because you have to actively trade or you have to actively set a stop loss. But whatever. If you have a nice trading bot, it's more more passive. And you know, crypto is an asset. And and you know, if you're uh, doing if you're trading forex then same thing you know asset classes so just want to get you guys on that train all right so you guys be safe out there be smart if you have any questions go ahead drop you know drop a question in the comments 
make sure you guys check out the links in the description it'll take you to my financial education channel it'll help you all right so i talk about everything that i did i pretty much give you guys all the tea i drop a million dollars worth of game on how to grow businesses side hustles whatever so you guys can click the links below you can talk about it you guys get you some information that way you can go out there and buy your own supercar and not have to pay for it out of your own pocket all right so again be safe be smart i'm gonna catch you guys in the next one peace out so you know i ended up um you know calling her i'm like hey you know i'm, I'm out here she's like i don't see you and i'm like i'm i'm out she's like out where i'm like i'm out in the middle of the street i was like let me get out the car and wave you know because it was dark i mean you know the, the 600 was the batmobile yeah like she couldn't see nothing so you know i ended up you know i was like hey what's up you know i get out the car and wave and she's like what the fuck is that <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was like, this is why I don't, you know, want to, you know, like, really have, you know, have myself out in the city like that. She's like, damn, I don't even know what to say. She's like, I feel like I belittled your ass. I was like, no, I was like, you didn't know, you know, I'm like, I mean, you didn't know and shit, but, girl, like, Acura, don't disrespect me like that. <laughs>